Let's get Eurified. Alrighty, so why did I decide to make a top 10 video all of a sudden? Well, it's definitely not because I'm running out of ideas for videos. No siree. It's also definitely not because I'm copying every lazy ass anime channel on YouTube that get away with doing as little work as possible. Definitely not. So now that you believe me, let's talk about today's totally fantastic, totally original video topic. My top 10 Yuri Ships in Anime video. Alright, now let's get serious. Now any Yuri fan worth his or her own salt can list out to you all their favorite Yuri ships and explain in excruciating detail why they are so precious to them. So, as a rite of passage, I believe that the time has come for me to do the same. Now this list will be your standard procedure. Ten ships of my choosing, consisting of both canon and non-canon Yuri relationships from anime only. And obviously, major spoilers ahead. Now then, let's cut the crap and get on with listing out my ultimate sources of happiness. Number 10, Adachi and Shimamura. Adachi and Shimamura. Starting off our list is a ship from one of my hypest anime of 2020. And boy oh boy, did that show live up to that well-deserved hype. First off, I'm just gonna preface this by saying that I have not read the light novel. I simply watched the anime and read a few anthology mangas here and there. But by golly, what I saw of these two has made a lasting impact. Right from the get-go, I greatly appreciated how methodical the series was in handling these two characters. Half the time we see these two hanging out and simply going through the motions of being average every day teenagers, and the other half were given deep glimpses into their psyche as they struggled to sort through their complicated personal feelings. Of course, I'm not ashamed to say it was more of a joy watching Adachi sort through her emotions, of being hopelessly in love with Shimamura. It also helps that she's voiced by one of my favorite anime voice actresses, as Kito is going places, I tell ya. Anyway, what I love most about these two is their sweet and innocent dynamic, two socially awkward teens slowly becoming closer with each passing day, with one of them being head over heels in love with the other trying her absolute darndest to close the distance between them. And like I said, that's where most of the joy comes from. Watching the shy and innocent Adachi aim for the Shimable has given me happiness. So much happinesses. Whether she's blushing hard from a head pat, being a nervous wreck from getting a lap pillow, getting super giddy after asking to go on a date, or attempting to have premarital unprotected finger sex, Adachi absolutely solidifies herself as a legend and an inspiration to awkward lesbian teenagers everywhere. You go! Go, girl. Number 9, Kanan and Mari. Love Lives Sunshine. Spoilers! Expect to see multiple Love Lives ships on this list. It is my bread and butter after all. Now what makes Kanan and Mari a standout ship to me is their consistency and openness. While Sunshine was a step up in the Yuri department compared to the original Love Live, the showrunners did still feel the need to pander to as many shippers as possible by attempting to cross ship. And while I totally understand the reasoning behind it, it nonetheless made the show feel a bit cheap and inconsistent. However, Kana and Mari managed to remain intact throughout the show, giving us a slew of romantic and adorable shipping moments. Now, I can harp on all day about their melodramatic conflict in Season 1, and how it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. I mean, I will talk about that in their own separate video, but since this is a celebratory occasion, I'll resist the urge to be an internet armchair critic and explain why they're such a lovable ship. Simply put, Kana and Mari is the wild and passionate couple. They hold nothing back when it comes to affection for each other. Other. With Mari, for example, in Season 1, she was determined to get her girlfriend back and make it very clear that she wants to repair their relationship and reclaim access to her favorite squeeze pillows. And in Season 2, Kanan was able to hike her pants up and repay the favor by showing Mari how much of a lady killer she is. Also, I'm a sucker for handsome girls paired with outgoing princess-like girls. My next ship will indicate that quite clearly. Anyway, Kanan and Mari are easily Aqua's powerhouse couple, and for that, they deserve my undying love and support. It's a shame they didn't show us their hot and messy makeup sex in episode 9. They would have been much higher on this list. Number 8, Anjé and Princess. Princess Principal. Ah, the titular princess and her spy in shining black attire. What made me fall head over heels for these two were their excellent chemistry and unshakable devotion to each other. Despite inhabiting a world full of dastardly plots and immense suffering, the two manage to find solace in each other's warm, gentle embrace, and it becomes absolutely clear that every single action they take is done in the name of their dearest love. Indeed, the goal of these two lovely ladies is to secure a future 
country where they can live happily ever after together, and they'll stop at nothing to protect that goal. I also mentioned that their chemistry is an excellent aspect to this ship. It's a combination of adorable and pure passion. I absolutely love it when a character drops their outward persona and reveals their true nature when interacting with the person they love most. It shows us an intimate side of them that we would never get to see otherwise. Now that's usually the case with romantic couples, but that is especially evident with Ange and Princess. When they're together, alone, with no distractions, it feels like time comes to a complete halt and they're able to drop their facade or let their hair down, as Princess so lovingly likes to say. Ange, a cold badass super spy, turns into a sweet, overly timid, innocent maiden, and Princess, a charming, sharp as attack, caring member of royalty, turns into a charming, sharp as attack, caring member of royalty who loves to playfully tease her beloved protector. Alright, one character drops her persona more than the other, but you get my point. With all that said and done, you can tell they mean the world to each other. And maybe someday, they can shout their love out to the world too, perhaps in one of the upcoming movies. Also in the movies, please give us some more snuggling time between them. I want to see how long it takes Princess to turn Anji into a squirming puddle of gay panicky gayness. Number 7, Ayumu and Yu, Love Live Nichikazaki School Idol Club. And here we get another Love Live couple, and a notorious one at that. I still have PTSD from episode 11 for Christ's sake. And oh man, do I have a lot to say about these two. But I'm gonna keep things nice and simple, and try not to turn this into a manifesto. Ayumu and Yu are quite possibly the gayest Love Live ship I've seen to date. And that's including everything I know about Love Live, in and outside of the anime. However, despite the many shipping factors they share, including the childhood friends aspect, being next door neighbors, the constant hanging out with each other, the eternal promise they made, this scene. The thing that makes this ship so enjoyable to me, or at least a good portion of it, is Ayumu. Watching her play the jealous girlfriend role, and I mean really getting into it, was a pleasant surprise to see in this franchise. If School Idol Project and Sunshine are the 101 level courses for Yuri, then Nijigazaki is the advanced graduate level course. And this is largely thanks to Ayumu, who can't seem to keep her hands off her beloved Yuchan. And who can blame her, when the person you love is hooking in a dozen girls a week, you tend to keep her on a tight leash. My squeeometer was off the charts while I was watching our sweet little bunny girl try so desperately to keep you to herself. And the amazing thing is that it wasn't subtle in the slightest. Now for how it was handled in both seasons... And let's just say I have many things to say. Many a things to say indeed. So we'll leave that for a separate video. So yeah, lots of things to love about Ayumu and Yu, and lots of potential ahead for them. However, I must express deep disappointment that we never got to see them have feet sex again in Season 2. I was very upset about that. And so was Quentin Tarantino! Number 6, Anne and Greya, Mysteria Friends. Oh my god, I love these two so much. For an anime that had no kissing or stupping, it managed to feel just as gay as any modern Yuri anime. This, of course, is thanks to the laser focus on these two lovebirds. No plot, no drama, just plain and simple gals being very close pals. Right off the bat, I was drawn in by the excellent contrasting personalities of these two characters. A headstrong, assertive tomboy, and a shy and timid dragon. Girl. And even though we've seen these character tropes together before, it makes it no less breathtaking to see it played out with these two magnificent goddesses. What makes Anne and Greya so captivating to me is their ever so delicate relationship. See, they're at the point where they're knowingly best friends, but also inching ever so closer to being lovers with every romantic interaction they share. It's like playing Jenga, which block will cause them to passionately fall onto the carpet and get all messy and and blocky together. They know that they're in love, but they're not quite at that stage where they can blurt it out just yet. So in the meantime, we get to see their adorable and sometimes naughty flirting. And I for one loved every minute of it. Do I even need to mention that fantastic boat scene? You know, many filmmakers will spend a lifetime trying to craft that perfect movie scene. Your Alfred Hitchcocks, Martin Scorsese, Stanley Kubricks, they ain't got nothing on Mysteria Friends. This scene gives us everything we needed to know about these two, executed flawlessly. Everything from the lighting, the sweat swelling music, the long intense gaze, I can do an entire deep dive on it, but I'd be risking another trip to the hospital. Anyway, as short as the anime was, you were given a plethora of amazing moments between these two wonderful characters. Massive praise to Psy Games for giving us this delightful little gem, and massive encouragement that they give us a second season. There's so much more Anne and Greya left to discover. After all, we still need that sleepover scene we were promised. Seriously, I want to see that more than I want to see them have sex. Well, not really, but it's pretty close.
Ghost number five, Momo and Shamiko, the demon girl next door. Make no mistake, this anime is a full-blown romantic comedy, starring an adorable and awkward magical girl who constantly wears her heart on her sleeve, and a sweet, lovable dork of a demon girl who's in a fragile state of having one foot in the closet and the other outside of it. There's so much to love about these two, from their constant flirting, bickering, blushing, and teasing. Pretty much every interaction they share, there's plenty to read into on the romantic front. There's never a dull moment with Shami Momo. They complement each other's personality perfectly, and in the short span of time we see them together, they brought so much happiness and meaning in each other's lives. And the things I freaking love seeing the most in a Yuri couple is good chemistry and a mutually beneficial relationship. And sex. I really love saying sex. Also on that note, I would like to mention that this is one of those rare ships that I personally don't know who would be the top and who would be the bottom. Seriously, I can't come to a logical conclusion. But on the other hand, Shami Momo is one of the purest ships I can think of, so imagining them getting hot and heavy right now is a bit of an undertaking. Both girls care a great deal about the other, and only wish to see them achieve maximum happiness and potential. Momo wants to see Shamiko become stronger and more capable as a leader, and Shamiko wants to make Momo happy, have her open up more, and not take on such a heavy burden by herself. Also, the way the series portrays their growing feelings for each other is truly fantastic. Two young, innocent girls slowly developing crushes for the other, but not entirely sure how to respond to their unfamiliar feelings of affection. I mean, it's pretty much on that line. Anyway, it's amazing how much fluffiness and romantic implication we see between these two without ever going into explicit territory. Well, except for Shamiko's obsession for Momo's navel. That's some straight up X-rated shit right there. Number 4, Maya and Claudine, Shoujo Kagaki, Review Starlight. God damn it, what is it about hot rivals that get your shipping blood pumping? Now I did talk a little about these two in my last Yuri shipping video, but it was more specifically about their rivalry. Now I can let loose and explain how much happiness Maya and Claudine has given me. Right from their intros, I knew there was something very special about these two. My immediate thoughts were, oh. They definitely are into each other. I mean, every scene between them is like a sexually tense nuke waiting to go off. I can't even decide who's gayer, the hot dominant tease or the hot flustered tsundere. Seriously, I'm just scratching the surface of this ship. There's so much going on between them romantically that I can come up with dozens of fanfics all in an afternoon. I mean, for one thing, we have the magnificent Tendo Maya, who is quite possibly the toppest character I've ever seen in any Yuri media. You pair someone like that with another character who is also a top, but much more competitive, and you get instant gold. They radiate so much charisma and gay energy that it makes total sense why the showrunners limited their screen time. They would absolutely steal the show. My enjoyment stems from watching these two play off of each other so eloquently. The hot-headed rival obsessed Claudine makes it her life's goal to surpass the equally talented Tendo Maya, while the latter silently and gleefully relishes the idea of her rival attempting such a feat, almost to the point of sexual arousal. Like I said, there's a lot of fanfics to be drawn from all this. Oh yes indeed. My one complaint though, if I had to give one, is their bizarre French-speaking scene in episode 10. Maybe it's my rustic Canadian blood talking here, but something about the way they spoke French seemed a bit off to me. Call me crazy, but it's almost like they weren't all that experienced speaking French or something. Like there were two people who never spoke the language before, and were told to read a few sentences off a script without much guidance. Uh, I don't know, that's the impression I got out of it. Number 3, Nozomi and Ellie, Love Live. The Yuri Goddess has blessed us with many fantastic couples, and Nozo Ellie is one of her finest creations. I cannot express in entirety how much I love these two. That'd be too much of an undertaking. It's like trying to explain Pop Team Epic to your grandparents. It can't be done! Now, I tried my best to summarize my love of Nozo Ellie in my last Yuri Ships video, which, by the way, please watch if you've not done so already. So I'll try not to repeat myself on every talking point. What makes Nozo Ellie such an impressionable ship to me is their natural bond. We're introduced to these two in episode 1 as student council president and vice president respectively, and without giving away too much, you can tell how close these two are, just from their interactions and mannerisms. They know virtually everything about each other, and confide all their plights and sorrows, and all their joys and accomplishments together. They are the ones who help them pull through their dramas in their respective episodes, and provided a shoulder to lean on in the face of any turmoil. And as I always say, what makes for a great couple is the ability to make up for each other's shortcomings. It's like being the metaphorical Bill to their metaphorical 
metaphorical TED. That's what I always tell my clients in couples therapy sessions. There is nothing, and I mean nothing, that would make me question these two being a happily wed couple in any timeline, world, alternate universe, or any goddamn Marvel DC multiverse cinematic universe crap before I even watched Love Live. I knew how popular a ship this was, especially in fanfiction circles. And just like Maya and Claudine, I can easily see why. Nozoeli has so much romantic potential between them to put down into written form. I'm just salivating at all the fan art I can draw. Whether it's sweet, dramatic, heart pounding, or naughty, Nozomi and Ellie are perfection wrapped in a perfect box inside another perfect box with a perfect bow on top. And as you'll soon find out with my numbers 2 and 1 spot, perfection comes in many different forms. Number 2, Nico and Maki. Love Live. Oh boy, I'm feeling giddy. If you were to ask a Yuri fan who their all-time favorite Love Live ship is, there's a 70% chance they'll say Nico Maki. Well, hell, it definitely feels that way. At the very least, there's a lot to love about this ship in general. Nico and Maki are quite possibly one of the most entertaining pairs to watch, and their back and forth together is what drives a lot of the shipping. I've often said that if you put these two in a room together, they'll create instant chemistry. And if you leave them alone in that room for too long, they'll create lots of babies. Nikomaki is one of the rare ships of mine where I was first exposed to their fanfictions before being exposed to the anime. And not only do they have a lot of fanfictions out there, they are also wildly entertaining to read. So as I went down the Nikomaki rabbit hole and became more and more enamored, I had a certain mindset of them that was only shaped by fanfictions. Suffice to say, when I finally started watching the anime and saw these two on screen for the first time, I had a slightly mild reaction. I mean, I did temper my expectations at first. I knew there was no explicit Yuri content between these two, but at the same time, I hope for something a little more. Just a little more than what we got. And to be fair, Season 2 in the Love Live movie definitely turned it up a notch. With all that said, I absolutely adore how these two interact. Double tsundere's that often disagree with each other, but share many similarities. Oh god, there's so much to talk about. Like how Nico is constantly jealous of how hot and talented Maki is, or how much Maki loves to tease Nico when she's doing her usual shtick, or how Nico consistently tries to get Maki's attention and gives her a big ol' hug at every opportunity, or how they grew up, got married, and gave birth to two beautiful daughters together? Anyway, nothing pleases me more than seeing some good old Nikomaki content. And despite not officially seeing these two on screen since 2015, the amount of fan art and doujinshi featuring Nikomaki never seems to slow down even to this day. That's the power of Nikomaki. Alrighty, now before we get to the ultimate Yuri ship of all Yuri ships, let's do the obvious and go through some honorable mentions. Hit it, Watch Mojo! Number 1 Kyoko and Sayaka, Madoka Magica. Yes, number one is none other than the fateful magical girls, Kyoko Sakura and Sayaka Miki. Now to tell the truth, it was really goddamn difficult deciding between them and Niko Maki as my number one, but I had to give the extra point to Kyo Saya, mainly for being one of my earliest ships. As much as I like to boast about my love for Love Live, the series that really kicked things off from my exploration of anime and Yuri in general is Madoka Magica. Truly an anime I consider to be 
be a masterpiece. I can do a full-blown analysis of it and how it takes your emotions on an epic roller coaster ride. But that is an entirely different beast of a video for another day. What makes these two stand out to me above the rest is their profound, intertwining dramatic development. They first started off as bitter enemies, wishing nothing more for the other than a one-way ticket to the afterlife. Then as their encounters pile on, they discover things about each other that make them more sympathetic in their eyes. Admittedly, it's Kyoko who really is affected most by their relationship, as she sees Saika's downward spiraling journey as a mirror to her own. And like a knight protecting her princess, she puts her life on the line, attempting to save Saika's soul from eternal damnation. A futile effort, unfortunately, but not meaningless, as Saika was able to express her gratitude to Kyoko in a rebellion. The most endearing part of this is realizing that Saika was able to learn all about Kyoko's previous efforts to save her. And because of this revelation, Saika's sole reason for coming back to the living was to see Kyoko again. Oh my god, I'm crying gay tears. Also, can I just say that Kyoko would be like the bestest friend you can possibly have? She's clearly caring and loyal, and seems like she would be a blast to hang out with. And I believe wouldn't hesitate at all to beat someone's ass for you if they looked at you the wrong way. Sayaka, you lucky son of a bitch. Anyway, I don't want to ramble all day long about Kyosaya. Just know they hold a very special place in my heart, and to me, are prime examples of characters finding love and new meaning in life after overcoming the darkest of adversities. Well, that didn't take too long, did it? So, as always, thank you for listening to me jabber on about my favorite things in life. Hopefully, you weren't too bored out of your mind. Anyway, it should go without saying that each of these ships will get their own Yuri Ships Analysis video in the future. Except Nozomi and Ellie, of course. Again, please watch that video. I just thought it'd be fun to set them all up in a nice, sweet list. So, in closing, please let me know what you think. Let's talk all about your favorite ships and about the beauty of shipping characters. I'm sure we'll have a nice, pleasant conversation about it. Unless you feel like starting a shipping war with me. In which case I will wreck you. But seriously, let's have those convos. And with that, my friends, I bid you adieu. Oh my god.